Someone who was like doing very well in 1968, who I think is an interesting character to think about, is Harry Worth. <laughs> okay. You, did, you didn't see that coming, did you? You might need to explain who, who, to almost everyone listening to Why to, I'm talking, about, ever why I'm talking to, Who the hell is Harry who Worth? Who the hell is Harry Worth? <laughs> well, he was a comedy actor. Significantly, he was born in Hoyland Common. Oh, right, okay. The son of a miner. He did actually work in the mines for a bit. He was obviously one of those working class guys who was sort of rescued a bit by the war, weirdly, that he mm. joined the Royal Air Force and he got involved in amateur dramatics and got, uh, those kind of shows. He got really into ventriloquism. Really? Quite a good ventriloquist. Was he? Yes, apparently. And he took that too. This is going to, you're going to like this, is that he did an audition in 1949 for the Windmill Theatre. Oh, that cut, pops up quite a lot in this podcast, yeah. The Windmill Theatre. He, he did an audition at the same time as Tony Hancock and Morecambe and Wise. We were saying the goons met at Windmill Theatre yeah. and that they all probably drank round the corner yeah. at the pub where, where John Wyndham was hanging Doom, out. Yeah. So John Wyndham would have seen Harry Worth's ventriloquist act, I reckon. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just a little, just to join up the dots. You've gone quite a long way into Harry Worth without mentioning the most famous thing about Harry Worth. Actually, I've got this in here. It says, so the opening titles of the Harry Worth show featured Worth stopping in the street to perform an optical trick involving a shop window, raising one arm and one leg which were reflected in the window, thus giving the impression of levitation. Reproducing this effect... That's literally the only thing I know know about Harry Worth. It's known as doing a Harry Worth. Do you know where it first happened? No. It happened in St Anne's Square, Manchester, where we were for a previous podcast, at Hector Powell's tailor's shop, so right next door to George Best's nightclub. Okay. (laughs) It's all join- I love the way this all joins it's up. It all joins up, right? I feel if Arthur Scargill had learned ventriloquism, the whole of British history would have been different. <laughs> <laughs> Very worth a head of Kestrel. 